Do you guys hear that? Is that boss music? Go naked and just go with the sword and that's it. What do I do with all this? <laughs> it says it in the title. <laughs> I'm a slut for roguelites. Hi everyone and welcome to the Unearthing Games podcast. My name is Eric and I'll be your lead excavator today. Uh, I am also joined today by Jacob. Howdy. How's and it going, Nick. <laughs> Hi. And we dig games. Uh, what have you guys been up to this week? Uh, um, not a whole lot. School, <laughs> you know. Played a lot of Valheim. Got into, got back into No Man's Sky recently. That was fun. I, I can see Nick glaring at me. I'm not glaring. He's like, <laughs> I'm not I bought glaring. you Valheim. No, 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 you no. You be playing Valheim. I'm not glaring no. at you. If anything, I'm, I, I, I'm, I want to hold, do the whole chime in where I'm like, didn't they have their like pet update? You know, they did. They did just have their pet update. Because No and Man's I Sky, his... like, I'm so proud of them for continuing to support the game. But they kind of nice. have to when they just failed miserably at launch. Yeah. To they did. live up to expectations. But, but I feel like they've made up for it since then. Like yeah. they've, no, but... they, they've made up for it, and now they're going, you know, to infinity and beyond with their game. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah, so I've been doing that as schoolwork. I've had reports and stuff due. So it's been busy. But Is it's it been midterms? Good. When are midterms? Midterms are a couple weeks from now. Yeah, aren't you about to or have like spring break or something? Spring day, you mean? Day. Yeah, it's it's a three day weekend is what they gave us for spring break. Oh, because uh, you like lost all the days to like the snow and stuff. So they're like, ah, we're not no. giving you a spring break. You had your, your nope. post winter break. That's no. Nope. They they actually specifically said that winter break is not going to affect anything. Oh, that the, well, then, that, then why do they only the give storm. you a long weekend for spring break? It's supposed to be a week. Uh, because last year, this time was when the school shut down for COVID. Oh, and they're like, yeah, since we did that last year, you're not going to have a good spring break this year. That's so. kind of. But dumb. what if you weren't even in school last year? <laughs> yeah, I was in school last year. All these new yeah, college like, students, like, like their the first time. <laughs> yeah, the new freshmen oh. that are like, oh yeah, first spring break, and it's like, no, you don't get one. <laughs> sucks, sucks to suck. What are you gonna do on spring break? You're like 18. Calm yeah. down. You can't even drink yet. Know. Well, like, like, you can't no even have fun. College student really can. And like that stops any of them. <laughs> I can drink. Yeah, but you're going for your master, so that's different. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's I'm more like, about, like a, undergrad. Aged. It's more of it's more of like a drowning my sorrows and not so much of a party. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, a thing. but no. So yeah, I have yeah. Spring break is coming up, and it'll be fun. It'll be good. Yeah, the little bit we have. What about you, Nick? What have you been up to? Um, playing Valheim. Like Jacob said, I'm I'm really proud of myself for getting what mm. Jacob, Phil, our cousin Chase. And friends. and Jacob's friend Max, I got all all of them pulled into Valheim, and we all have our own little our little village we've built. We have a castle with some oh yeah, th their walls that they, they work. <laughs> I would say that they keep the monsters at bay, but not anymore because the monsters spawn within the walls. So okay, I think it that is what it is. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but having a ton of fun with Viking Minecraft. I sail around a lot. Mm -hmm. I I almost sail to the edge of the world. I haven't gotten there yet. Oof. Yeah. What about you, Erica? What have you been up to? Um, I've had a really relaxed week this week. I started. I I picked a. I I picked up a new Nancy Drew game, so I've been playing that a little bit. Then, uh, yes. Nick and I started playing Minecraft again. Oh, oh no. Project Ozone Three. <laughs> Ugh, just uh, so good. So I'm very happy. I, I I finally got my hands on a on a RTX graphics card. Probably paid more than I should have, but. I got well, one finally, so I can actually play games and stuff on my yeah. computer her, without her, worrying. Her that graphics it's card die. probably cost more than most of my PC, so Ooh, nice. <laughs> but it's also more powerful than my PC. Most of your PC. So, <laughs> so her, again, her, gra her graphics card alone is just, more powerful yeah. than your PC. <laughs> it like takes my computer's lunch money, kind of thing. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. But yeah, so I'm very happy about that. It's finally done. I don't have to like my next goal is like water cooling for it, but that's like way in the future right well it's liquid, good liquid cooling 
yeah. liquid coolant. Uh, that's all I've been up to. I've played those games and then the game I'm going to talk about. But I haven't gone back really to any other. I've been wanting to go back to They Are Billion so I can try to actually win one. I haven't Finish done it that up. yet. Mm-hmm. You got this. I believe in you. <laughs> yeah, you, you can do it. Yeah. All right. So let's go into the games we played this week. Nick, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. So... So the game that I played this week is called Stasis. This is a game uh, developed and published by a group called The Brotherhood. <laughs> I had actually never heard of them before until I kickstarted a game by them, and um, this is like their their original baby. The one that I kicked, the one that I kickstarted was like their third third game. So mm-hmm. I went back and I was like, let's check this bad boy out. And so it is a uh, well snap. Let's just say that the tags sum it up. So its tags on Steam are adventure, horror, point-and-click, sci-fi, indie. So the point-and-click horror gist is 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 the whole spiel of the game. It is a a very horror themed kind of thing. It has a lot of um like Dead Space vibes. Did you ever play Dead Space? Or do you, mm-hmm. have you seen anybody play Dead Space? You know that whole you are these people on this somewhat abandoned ship, and you're trying to figure out like where the heck is everybody? Yeah. Yeah. And there's like monsters, but you don't ever really see the monsters. They're like in the walls, and you hear them like clink, 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 <laughs> and stuff. That's this game. So like your guy wakes up from like cryostasis, like you were in some sort of pod, and he knows nothing. He doesn't know where the heck he's at. He doesn't know what's going on. He like woke up because of some malfunction that opened his pod. Mm-hmm. Like I guess he's nice. been in there for like ten years or fifteen years because he was like on a flight to one of the moons of Jupiter with his family. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so the the whole plot of the game is he is trying to find out what happened to his wife and daughter as he's as you're adventuring through the ship. So it's all point and click, so it has a lot of those funny environmental puzzles where it's like, oh, if I pick up this drill, then I can take the drill over here and I interact with the one thing to, like, drill open the lock on the toolbox, and that's how I get the wrench, and... I use the wrench to break a glass thing. And, you know, it does those sort of, those uh, stair-step puzzles, I guess you could yeah. kind of call them. I was going to mm-hmm. ask, does it have any actual puzzle puzzles, like Nancy Drew type puzzles? It did, it did. Um, I would say they are definitely not on the level of Nancy Drew puzzles because <laughs> I, I didn't have to Google solutions to those. <laughs> um, there were a few times I did have to Google what the heck am I supposed to do next? Because it's like I'm can... sitting here with like a torn sweatshirt, a shard of glass, and a drill. And I cannot figure out what the heck I have to do to turn on the elevator. You know, I'm not yeah. MacGyver, so yeah. what do I do? And I love so how I, we can. I love how we can tell the difficulty of a puzzle by how long it takes next to go to Google. I'll, I'll have you know, I got through like the first couple of bits before I had to Google anything. That's fair. I, I would That's say fair. it's a little bit in the like, is unintuitive a word? It's a bit unintuitive where it's figuring out where you can actually walk, because mm. it's these really well done like hand-drawn sort of uh, like environments so like the environments look great Mm -hmm. to the point that like watching your animated guy move around he looks out of place on Uh on the on the backdrop yeah but everything looked so great but it was kind of hard to tell like is this bottom left corner is that a door is that a hallway can i go down there i I don't really know stuff there i just have to click over there and have him walk that way and when he gets close enough to a thing he goes through the door it's like oh okay uh like your cursor doesn't change shape or anything to indicate that there's a door there not always. Okay. Not, not not always that I found. Like most most of the time, the doors were always somewhere where you could easily see them. Mm-hmm. But every so often, it would be like in the bottom left or right of this like isometric view, you know? Yeah. So, it was a really fun game. Uh, I I honestly really enjoyed it. I'm I'm not usually into point and click adventure games, but this actually it, it hooked me immediately. Like the whole where the heck am I? Where's my family? Kind yeah. of thing. I, I thought was great. And then figuring out what the heck happened to the ship and the crew. Was, was pretty cool. Uh, it did have a funny mechanic that I thought was a bit weird that all of the achievements for this game are finding creative ways to die. Because yeah. you know how, like, Nancy Drew, you have the whole, like, you know, oh, you get that, uh, that like, retry screen where it's like, yeah. oh, Nancy screwed up and she got caught. Yeah. And now, you know, try again. Well, this whole thing is like, if you mess up on certain puzzles or mess up in certain ways, your guy dies. And it just takes you back to the last time you saved. Mm-hmm. Well, all the achievements are like finding creative ways to kill yourself. <laughs> and some of them aren't even that creative. Like one of them was literally just, I took the drill item 
and used it on myself. Oh my god. And he and he drills himself. And it's like, that's like, why would you do that? And so like so it kind of became like a scavenger hunt where it's like, all right, how can I kill myself now? <laughs> and so Do you just inter- do you just interact on yourself with every item to see how it can kill you? By the end of it, yes, that was what I was doing. Anytime <laughs> I picked up a new item, I was like, let's see. And yeah, more creative, more creative <laughs> ways as you go. And then the, the the hard ones were finding ways that you could use the items on the environment to kill yourself. So that, yeah, there was one like that I, I had to go. I, I missed like two achievements, mm-hmm. and so after I after I finished it, I went and Googled like how did I get those? It's like oh, you missed these two spots back in chapter one, and I'm like, well, I don't want to go really? all the way back there and do it again. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't 100 percent it, but I really liked it. So oh, yeah. Like well, I said, good. isometric point and click adventure, really cool, um, like dystopian future kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I really like that. You know me, I, I'm a sucker for a good just dystopian story, and this is the like, similar to the future that Dead Space gives you. It's kind of like Earth's exhausted all of its resources, and so now we're out taking stuff from every other planet we find in the galaxy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like Typical. that. That that it seems like it's that kind of world. They don't take too deep of a dive into it. You have to like read all of the notes you find to get all of that, which mm-hmm. I started to read all of them because I thought it was actually really interesting. I was about to ask if you, if there were any type of like audio logs or things that you had to find to to get this more of the story and background other than just playing through. Yes, there are audio logs you can find, um, and there are like little like PDA logs. I guess everybody that was on this crew was encouraged to like keep a personal log, basically. Mm-hmm. And so every so often you would find personal logs from like important people. Like I found one for like the the head of the hydroponics department and like all of the weird experiments that she was doing with plants and stuff. You yeah. Know? So pretty pretty cool story. I, I would definitely recommend it. If you like puzzle games, if you like horror games, uh point if you like point and click adventure games, then I would say this is probably among the best that I've seen. Like I've watched several people play them online. So Yeah. Nice. So that was a that was my thing. Cool. What was it again? It was stasis called uh, by... Stasis, and it's by The Brotherhood. The Brotherhood. The yeah. Brotherhood. Like, the, like I said, Stasis came out several years ago, so it's actually a really reasonable price on, on Steam. Yeah, it says mm-hmm. it was released in 2015. <laughs> wow. Like I, said, I, like I said, I kickstarted a game for them, and the game that, that I got from them, I was like, wow, this is really, this looks amazing. What else has this group done? Mm-hmm. And then they had this one, Stasis, which I played through. And they also had a free one called Kane. It's K A Y N E, that I, I haven't played yet, but it's another point and click adventure game. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Set in this same universe, and I, I downloaded it. I just haven't played it yet because you know there's too many games to play. <laughs> and I was like, it's free, so yay in the collection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> free things is always nice. Yes. The low, low price of absolutely nothing. Right. All right. What game did you play this week, Jacob? Ooh, okay. So my game is called Wildermyth by Worldwalker Games, LLC, both developer and publisher. Mm-hmm. And I remember I remember seeing this game at PAX one year. And I think I was I, with I, you when we saw this one. You, yeah. you, were, you were definitely with me. I, I definitely remember you being there. And I, I, I remember distinctly that I didn't play it. Well, yeah, that I, I think just, their, their booth was like packed, probably. They, they had a lot of people there. I just remember watching like people play it, and I was like, that looks really... It's, it's got a really nice, like, almost like, you know, like pop-up book art? Yeah. yeah. Right? That's that, that's like the that. kind of that's the kind of art style it has. All of the characters and the assets are all two D, like, like cardboard cutout, like cardboard cutouts almost yeah. of players. Yeah, I think Paper Mario is probably definitely a good comparison. And anyway, so it's a it is a team based uh, tactical RPG. Ooh, I do love those. And there are, I think, three like campaigns that you run that are actually like that have stories attached to them Mm -hmm. and each campaign is done in between three and five acts right so you start off a campaign with like three characters and usually it gives you 
one of each class because there are three classes there's the there's your warrior class your ranger slash rogue class and your your mystic the mystic class Mm -hmm. and and yeah and you just you just run through a story it's it's basically like quick rolling D &D characters and going for it okay and uh and it'll give you like a nice little procedural map that has regions and everything and it's great because uh in the there are random events as well as you're traversing the world map and they'll they'll reference the region you're in even though it's procedurally generated and has a random name they'll yeah. reference it anyway <laughs> and oh the, the events are so funny well not not necessarily funny <laughs> like and all of like all of your dialogue is in like comic boxes right like they're in comic square like comic frames uh-huh. okay and and just like if you if you really like like stories and really getting into the narrative of what your characters are doing, then this is this is a great one. Like there was there was a random event I had that we found this rock that looked like that looked like a wolf's head, right? And one of and one of my characters was enthralled by it, and I had the option to let her either ignore it or or go to it and and do something on it and i was like you know what go to it see what happens <laughs> and she gets like this blessing from a wolf god <laughs> and and she starts turning into a wolf oh gosh <laughs> oh gosh and a blessing and a curse in disguise <laughs> well so so it's interesting cuz this is where the the axe part plays in so yeah, at the start she gets a wolf head, and it's kind of wonky. It's a, it's it's interesting. But so just her head is a wolf. Yeah, just her head is the wolf. <laughs> but as you when you complete the objective of Act One, right, you move into Act Two. Well, there are it'll it'll tell you some amount of years that have passed between Acts One and Two, and it'll give you a little right. It'll give you a little depiction of what your characters were doing between between acts and and always if somebody has one of these effects they gain another body part that changes oh. <laughs> so i came like uh i came back to the next uh, for the next act and she had a, a wolf leg oh <laughs> and and it was and there's there's that i know of there's at least four of those kinds of conditions Okay. Like a wolf that, and like a bat and Well, no, stuff. like they're all they're all different. Like one of them was I think one of them is bound to happen. Like it's going to happen eventually as part of one of the stories. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's a, like it's like a crystalline being. But it also changes how that person plays because it changes like what weapons they can have available. Okay. Well, yeah, it changes their their stats and available abilities and stuff probably. Yeah. Right? Yes. And and they're all like that. Once you beat a campaign, uh, you can turn your characters into legacy characters. So you can use them in the random, like, three-act or five-act campaign. They're not... I don't think they actually have stories attached to them. I would. I don't, I don't know for sure. I haven't played one of those. But they're not named. Mm-hmm. They are literally just named three-act, three, three act, five-act campaign. That's all they are. It's yeah. kind of like your way of, like... Like if you're tired of a certain character, you can kind of like put them out to pasture, and they show up in a different no. kind of thing. Exactly, because <laughs> your because your characters have retirement ages as well. Okay. So when they retire, they go to legacy, and you can use them in one of your legacy campaigns. But or they could die. That's that's also a that deal. Always a possibility. <laughs> and it's great because. See, I wanted I wanted this kind of thing in like a D and D campaign, where because when they die, they can either they have three options in death, right? They can either be maimed, so they will lose an appendage, so they'll come back after the battle with either a hook hand or a peg leg. It's, it's wonderful. Okay. <laughs> and or the or you can have them killed, like you can let them die. In in death, they can either 
grant a bonus to your to your other characters that are still in the combat, or they can do some damage to whatever killed them. Okay. So, so it's kind of like like you know like, like oh no throw kind of Johnny thing. died I'm gonna fight to avenge him and they fight better and yeah. for the rest of the battle kind of thing mm-hmm. or it's like his last act is to you know deal some more damage yeah and I thought it was really neat the stories they have are actually fairly they're actually pretty decent they're actually pretty good and uh, and yeah it's if you like little they're they're not one shots because you do like a campaign does kind of take a while. Mm-hmm. to go through but the 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 random nature of the game is just really great and how everything is different every time you play it it's just you get new people new places new things to do it's 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 really fun i enjoy it yeah and it says that this is still early access so there's they're still working on this Yes, it is. It is still early access. Currently, twenty bucks on Steam. I would definitely support this game. It's really great. So it it looks awesome. Like I, I I'm remembering more and more about when we saw this at PAX and the pitch from the guy. And like on the, paper, the dude was... I mean, I guess no pun intended. Um, <laughs> on paper, this sounds like like epic fantasy story generator one oh like you know nine thousand kind of thing. So it's like uh-huh. like it's like generating your own little Lord of the Rings epic. You know, every time you play it, through a campaign, kind of thing. It 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 kind of is because all almost always your objective in the act is like across the world. Oh well, yeah. And you and usually I I work more on because the world is also like in your first act the world is like kind of limited, mm-hmm. right? You like you only have so much area available to explore in. And as you go through the acts, the world builds and builds and builds. And it's kind of like kind of like just cones out until you have like a lot of options yeah and then like every place that you haven't explored yet is grayed out and gosh there's just even events like during the act like if you spend too much time like meandering around the bad guys get harder you know (laughs) random events happen like invasions so baddies (laughs) who have like infested one region will shift over to another one Okay. And like, in, did, and you, did you another... stop the orc king? It's like, nope. Well, guess what? The orc hordes are moving on. Yeah, it's like, did like, did you clear out these places? No. You should probably think about that because you're also <laughs> like the the amount of years of peace you have in between acts is dependent on what you, like how well you cleared the area before okay. you beat the place. Yeah. And some final objectives are contingent on clearing the area. Before you actually finish the act. Okay. I don't know. It's really fun. I've had a few characters die. I have a few characters <laughs> that are in Legacy that I, I really want to like start another one with. Because they were just so great. <laughs> they they keep their weapons and all that in Legacy also, as well. So I have some really... I have some really decent weapons on the guys that I want to try. <laughs> that I want to go back and, and play other campaigns in. It's really cool. So that's... That's Wildermyth by Worldwalker Games LLC. It looks really cool, honestly. Like looking at mm-hmm. the, the Steam page, like I'm honestly surprised that I didn't buy this impulsively back when we first saw it. <laughs> it's because you weren't that you weren't that impulsive back then. <laughs> That's true. So, but yeah, I don't know, it's really unique art style. I really like the art style. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm really a sucker cute. for a unique, like well done art style, mm-hmm. and that's definitely what this is. But yeah. So about you, Erica, what were you playing this week? So this week I played Orion Trail, and this is by Ooh. Shell Games, and that's S C H E L L. Shell Games, uh, both developed and published. And so, from the title Orion title Orion Trail, um, it it's very Oregon Trail. So this game is like Oregon. Oh, sorry, the tags. The tags are indie, adventure, great soundtrack, and sci-fi. Um, so this game is like a mixture between Oregon Trail, FTL, and Star Trek. Huh. Is okay. how I would describe it. I, mean, so, I could get that just from looking at the little picture up here on the top of their Steam page with like the the derpy blonde Captain Kirk guy holding up his pistol. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, totally you start out um, 
the whole premise of the game is you are manning this uh, ship and you have to get to the end of this galaxy. You have to explore the galaxy, basically. Um, and along the way, you spend resources like fuel, um, you have pull points for damage, you have food, and you also have crew. Um, so your the crew number is mostly just like the red shirts that no one cares about. The, the, the icon actually has red shirts on it. Um, <laughs> and when you go on, you can go on away missions and they just have little red shirts. They all have names when you go on away missions, but no one really cares. <laughs> Um, Oof, but then you like, pick your like <laughs> then you pick your four main people. So you've got your your captain, your first officer, you've got the engineer, and then you've got like the comms person. Mm -hmm. I believe okay. are are the four, and each of them have um, a certain level of like traits. Um, they're like it's either attack, tactics, diplomacy, science, or bravado. Um, are the different traits that you can have and basically the the total level of traits on your ship determines how well you'll do in each of the little um, instances or interactions that you come across so sort of like FTL the map is you know dot space and you're going from one point to the next um, and uh, you know and you have different paths you can go and just depends on wh which area you want to go to what you want to find um each little planet or star or whatever it is that that's on the map um offers different benefits so you can actually see that as you're before you go there you can say like oh well this if i go over here i have the chance to get food or if i go over here there's fuel things like that so you can pick your path based on what you need at the time um mm -hmm. and so like i said you use food and fuel as you're moving through so each like pip that you move is three food and ten fuel so you got to make sure you have that and then your crew what i didn't realize was important the first round um <laughs> your crew is pretty important because you need them kind of like as cannon fodder type of stuff <laughs> if you don't if you don't have your crew then your main four people start taking damage and start Ooh. being negatively affected and so you, the, the way I died in one of my runs is the entire ship starved to death because <laughs> we ran out of fuel and food. <laughs> um, but so each of these little encounters, it's different and it varies like FTL. Um, but it'll give you three options to choose from and they're based on the different uh, skills that you can have. So it could be like diplomacy, science, and tactics. Or, you know, whatever. And you pick the one that you're best at. And the way it determines if you're successful or not is it's just like a little spinning wheel type of thing. And the more points you have in that skill, the more uh, passes you're going to get on that spinning wheel. So the better you are, the more likely you're going to pass it. Um, and so that's really cute. I, I really liked it. Um and that's pretty much it. Like I said, you're you're trying to balance all of your things and get through the entire galaxy at the same time, and it's very hard. Um, something that's really cute too is that you'll just be uh, traveling from one point to the next, and you'll run into um, a little uh, what is it called? Like a little tombstone, a little yeah, like a little tombstone. Yeah. And it'll be like, do you want to go visit and pay respects? And so you can, and you can go and visit. There's one example on the Steam page, and it says, Garth was eaten by warp weasels. And then it's got, <laughs> and, and they're always really cute. Like, there was one I found that was like, um, something sharpshooter. Turns out he needed to learn how to shoot or something like that. And it was just like, that's huh. cute. <laughs> but when you go there, it could either be like a trap or it could be like a benefit. So there was one time I went, and then we were gonna fly away and as soon as we got in the ship like the little turrets popped up out of the ground from the grave site and started shooting at us so we lost some whole points oh. um but then there was also one time where we went to go visit to pay our respects and there was extra fuel laying around so we got to take fuel with us and it was a bonus <laughs> hey <laughs> but yeah i think it's really cute if you ever run out of fuel you have to stop obviously um, and you put out an SOS signal and wait for someone to come and rescue you. And that's where, like, 
like I said, I starved to death because I ran out of fuel and we were waiting and we ran out of food. And when, <laughs> so once you run out of food, then you start losing crew members. Um, and then once you lose your crew members, then each of your four people, they all have three pips of health. They start losing one pip of health per like turn that you're waiting. And so everyone died. <laughs> but but here's my question to you. Did, did anybody get space dysentery? No, there's no dysentery. Because <laughs> I mean, Can't. it's not Oregon Trail if you if you don't get dysentery. Die. If you don't die of dysentery. Yeah, and then the away <laughs> missions are interesting. Um, so of your your three, so the 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 captain doesn't get to go on the away missions, but the other three, you pick one of them. Hopefully, they have good skills, and you send them down with some red shirts, and they encounter whatever they find, and. There's options, again, where it's like, oh, you know, this one's a tactics or a, you know, science type quest. Is my person mm -hmm. good at it? And it's like, okay, well, I'll try it. But as you're going through, and with these ones, each of your crew members counts as a spot on the wheel. And so if you spin it and you land on a crew member, you succeed in the mission, but that crew member dies. So... Ooh. As you go, if you keep doing that, <laughs> you'll lose all your cr all your crew members, and the odds continually get worse for you. Like your your odds of succeeding keep going down, so you keep losing crew, and your odds are going down. And so there was one point where I lost one of my I think it was like my my comms person because he went on an away mission, and everyone died. <laughs> But like they're all fulfilling their red shirt destiny, you know, <laughs> where it's like, you know, Captain Klingon and they just die, you know, like right away. <laughs> like that's that's all that's all that instant Ricky is meant to do. Yeah. So But they all have really funny names and each of the, the people that you pick, you know, you get like three options every time you're you're gonna pick one of your positions and they have cute little backstories and I, I think it's really cute. It's really funny, very very much a Star Trek based game. There's a lot mm -hmm. of references to that. <laughs> Man, I, was, yeah, I, was, I, could... I, I scrolled further down on this because it has mostly positive reviews, but it doesn't have that many reviews on Steam, right? Oh, and yeah. like the first couple of people are like negative reviews, and I'm reading it. I'm like, did you people ever actually play Organ Trail? Because they're all <laughs> like, this is all just random. It's just RNG. There's no skill required to this. It's like, that was organ trail, man. <laughs> like you're just you're just trucking along, and all of a sudden it's like, flip the axle broke. I guess we're stuck. We have to wait for someone to buy an axle off of, or oh no, little Jacob's got pneumonia. Someone got <laughs> bit by a snake <laughs> and died. <laughs> oh gosh, we're at the river. I guess we have to caulk the wagon and swim across. Oh, yeah. Like, but it was all just R and G. Like it was like, well, I hope we make it across. I mean. And, that's what this game is. Mm -hmm. Like, but they're all like, "I hate it. It's random." This yeah. one guy, though, I I could get his frustration. The end of his his review is, "I play FTL and I loved FTL and I was hoping this would be a good FTL replacement." No. It's not FTL. No, it's not FTL. It it's a space themed game where you're moving from point to point on a map. I think that's the the closest to FTL you can get the, with this one. The little the little star jumps. That's all. Yeah. That looks <laughs> right. Like. So. It's a space theme Oregon Trail. That's, that's that's what this is. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely all all RNG. Even though, and like, to start off, like your skills that you have, it's all like one or two points in each person. So no matter what, you guys are not very good at anything. So you're not going <laughs> to succeed a lot in your mission. So it's going to be a lot of negative things. It's like the low budget Star Trek crew. You know, <laughs> what if Scotty was just an okay engineer? You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's that's what it seems like, but it was yeah. a really cute game. Like I, I'm actually really glad you stumbled upon it because like you played a bit, and then I came to watch you play, and I was like, "This is adorable." Like, it's I, adorable. I love it. <laughs> it's it's really adorable. I love all the little names of the people, and it's just cute. Like it is RNG, but I like it. It's cute enough. <laughs> so basically, don't don't go into this game thinking you can actually apply any sort of skill. Yeah, it's yeah. literally just rolling the dice and. Mm -hmm. Hoping yeah. your red shirts don't all die before you make it to the end. Yeah, because even if you're like, oh, I'm low on food, you know, this star has an option, a uh, possibility of getting me food. You're probably not going to get it. Like, <laughs> the, the odds aren't in your favor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it was really cute. Oof. Really cute game. Mm -hmm. it, looks really, it looks really neat. It looks really fun. <laughs> oh, uh, right. But yes, yeah, so that was Orion Trail by Shell Games. 
Nice. All right. Really now cool. that we really went cool. through our video games, let's talk about the board game we played through. Who wants to kick it off? Oh boy. Uh, I'll, I'll kick us off. Say, I'll do it. <laughs> I volunteer's tribute. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So the, the board game that we played this week um, is Wingspan. This was designed by Elizabeth Hargrave. The art, which was fantastic, mm-hmm. is by Anna Marie Martinez. Oh, hold on. Anna Maria Martinez. Jara, Jaramillo? Jaramillo? Jaramillo. I apologize. I didn't mean to butcher your name. <laughs> so uh, we have that. Natalia Rojas and Beth Sobel. So again, the art for this game was just phenomenal. And this was, was published by Stonemeyer Games. So I, I feel like we've played Stonemeyer Games games before. <laughs> uh, the name sounds familiar. But we saw this game all over the internet last year. Mm-hmm. This was like the game of 2020. I guess, you know, it just, it was really popular. I kept seeing this box art, which is this beautiful, like, scissor tail something bird. <laughs> um, we kept seeing that box art show up everywhere. Yeah. And so it, it was just a fantastic game. Like, it's, it's really cute. The whole premise is that you are all playing birders. Is that the term? What's the term for people that watch birds? Or that, I, I don't know. I think it calls you birders. Yeah, like, every, every player is a birder. <laughs> And you are trying to attract different birds into your particular, like, animal sanctuary or, or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And so the whole premise is to basically draw in the best birds to get the most points and, and win, you mm-hmm. know? And so everyone is competing over who can get the best birds. And that, 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 that's the most watered-down explanation. I can't think <laughs> of the rules. Oh, yeah. But, um, snap, I'm trying to think of where to, where to even start. Right, it's. It seems like a big game at first, and it's definitely one of those that it starts to make a lot of sense as you play it. Like the the all you you start understanding the mechanics and how. How a turn works and all that all mm-hmm. that stuff. Yeah, no that yeah. that that no that that hooks me into into a good spot. Thank you for for talking about the turns. So. <laughs> It, it definitely it, it does have a big table presence. So like if you just pull all the pieces out and kind of set it up, you're kind of like, wow, oh, there is a lot of pieces to this. What? Yeah. Where do I even start? Mm-hmm. You start by building the adorable birdhouse <laughs> dice tower that comes in the box, which I did, and I popped all the pieces out without even reading the instructions. And I was like, oh no, I should have read the instructions. Um, of course, it so I popped them out and I put the bird tower together. All right, and it works wonderfully. Because it has a cute dice tower. Um, it's got a bunch of funny dice that have little animal symbols on them. But, again, I get distracted. <laughs> so back to the turns. Turn order. So every player has uh, little action cubes that they can spend uh, on their turn. So mm-hmm. every round it has, the, the player starts out with eight turn cubes. Eight, eight, uh, eight action <laughs> cubes. I'm trying to think what to call them. Yeah. And so you just keep going around in, in circles until everyone's used up all their cubes. And that will finish the round. So the actions that a player could take vary depending upon what you've got on your board. So obviously you can play a bird card and you play a bird to one of the three different environments that you have on your your play mat. So there's like forest, grasslands, and water. Yeah. I don't know. Wetlands. Like wetlands. There you go. Wetlands. <laughs> and so you could play birds to the various environments. Certain birds can only go to certain types. Mm-hmm. You could So you could choose to play a bird. You can choose to draw food cubes from the bird feeder dice tower and so the bird the food is what you need is the currency you spend to play birds attract to attract yes. birds there you go to attract yeah. birds so do you want to attract birds that like fruit well you have to play little cherries right do you there's there's cherries wheat mice fish and worms worms yeah yes and so the birds all have varying costs. So some might cost like a worm and a fish. Some might cost a cherry and a wheat. It really just depends on the type of bird. So you can choose to draw food. You could choose to have your birds lay eggs because you're working your way from left to right across your player board. And when you get to the farther right segments uh, of your board, you have to actually spend eggs to also play your birds. So mm-hmm. it's on kind top of, a... of your on top of whatever they require for. Yeah, on top of their food food cost. So it's kind of got this nice little action economy sort of thing where it's kind of like, what's how do I get the most bang for my buck out of my moves? You know? Yeah. 
and everybody and then, has secret objectives that they're trying to meet before the game ends. So yes. it's got that, uh, it's got kind of like a parks feel almost. Yeah, it really does. In that, <laughs> it really does. Like this, my entire experience really just reminded me of parks, which is which I feel like is why I really enjoyed it so much. Like the art is very good, just like Parks was. Mm-hmm. It the... teaches you a little bit about what you're what you're playing, like Parks does. Yeah, <laughs> just like Parks. Yeah, because yeah, every bird park little, has the little, the little, little like fun facts. snippet fun fact about yeah. it, and then what environments you can find it in. Right. Well, so and, and uh, whenever you put your little block down for a turn, right? That's that's not really the end of it, because yeah, you put your you put your block down, you you gain whatever resources, eggs draw cards you want and then you start moving it down the track back to the, back to the to the left hand side mm-hmm. and whatever and your birds some of them will have activatable abilities things that you can do whenever your little pit lands on them mm-hmm. yeah. but there's also so there's also secret objectives for a, well they're not really secret objectives there are objectives for the individual rounds because yeah. the game is played in four rounds yes. right and after after every round, you have to give up an action dice, or not? Mm-hmm. It's not a dice, an action cube. Yeah. To mark what place you'd made on the objective for that round. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I remember, like, one of the ones we had was birds or eggs in this type of nest, and so yeah. you're you have to you have to look at all your bird cards and be like, okay, because they have like some fun. Uh, little, you have your card. All the cards have their information on them. You know how much points the bird is worth, uh, their nest type, how mm-hmm. many eggs you can have on that bird, uh, their wingspan, which was a fun one. Yeah. But uh, so like, you know, whoever has the most of the most eggs in this type of nest gets the first place. Mm-hmm. Second place goes, you know, obviously the second person, and. If someone ties, they both get it. Cool. Yeah, and that's worth so many victory points, depending on who gets At first, uh, yeah. yeah, first or second, or first, second, mm-hmm. or third kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Right, and you do that once every round. once around because every round has a secret or has an objective. Yeah. So yeah, it's one a of those really neat way to kind of make the uh, like it, make, it makes it so that you have less actions as the game progresses on, so you kind of have to be smarter about your your moves. Right. Yeah. Right. Because every round you're giving up an action. To, yeah. to mark your place on the deal, and you have to because it's part of the game. Like, <laughs> no, there's none of this. Like I don't want to. It's like I don't want to be scored. Don't. Don't. I don't want to. I don't want to do it. I'll, I'll keep it. I'll. I'll, I'll just eat it. It's all contact. No, you have. You have to give up an action. Every round. So by by round four, you have what five actions from your eight. Yeah. Yeah. So. As it was really neat. It's it is definitely one of those games that it is intimidating to look at. Mm-hmm. But once you start playing, you're like, "Oh, this is this is a cakewalk." It's it's a very easy game to get into. Oh yeah, that that's what we 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 first broke it open, because like this is one of the ones like Erica on a whim like, you bought a whole bunch of board games like all at once. I think like six of them came in the mail. Yeah, I bought. Right? I think I <laughs> bought six once. of them all at once. And this one came in that, and I remember we opened it up, and it it did take us a bit to figure out how to set it up. Yeah. Well. <laughs> The first time we also played this was during um, the snow here in Texas and the blackouts that we were playing by a little, we had a little like Pullman lantern type thing. So we were playing by lantern in our kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> bird, bird watching by lantern light. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but, oh, once, wow. but once everybody has a general idea of how the game works, it is super it's... fast. Like it says 40 to 70 minutes to play. I, I think can... the 70, like that's... That's assuming that's, that there's at least one person who has never played before. Or right. has, like, analysis paralysis. The paralysis. And they're like, oh, well, if I take that food, then he won't be able to get the food. And then I'll, you know, <laughs> that kind hey, of thinking. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Phil wasn't playing with us. Okay. <laughs> he didn't play. You're right. He didn't play. We, we got to draw him in, though. He would love this game. Oh, he, he would. would. No. He was it's, almost it's there. The kind, it's the so kind close. where you can fight for yourself, but also fight to hurt others. So, right. you know. So great. <laughs> About a... But no, it's just really something that you could easily get into. It's really mm-hmm. very low barrier for entrance. So I could kind of understand barrier. why it, it was so 2020's popular. you know game of the 
I, I don't think it ever got an award for game of the year. Maybe it did. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know who gives away those awards, <laughs> but I could see how it could have won game of the year for 2020. Well, so on Board Game mm-hmm. Geek's website, it actually lists all the awards it won. Oh, um, oh man. It, I don't think it was actually a... So it was the Jug Adult Game of the Year winner last year. But really, all of their <laughs> awards and nominations were in 2019. Because this game came out in 2019. Oh. So maybe all of the stuff that we saw on the internet about it was just carryover from 2019. Yeah. I mean, because... Maybe. I could see this being one of those, like, iconic sort of games that, like, like Catan, where, like, it goes on for a long time, mm-hmm. and people will remember Wingspan, you know? Yeah. Long mm-hmm. after, long after, like, you know, it's not the new hotness anymore, but it's still, <laughs> like, a game that people are like, hey, remember Wingspan? It's a freaking fantastic game. Yeah. Right, and you know, I think pretty... the fact that they had um, a mod, right? You could buy the mod on Tabletop Sim, and it, and that's all scripted and stuff. I feel like that, it, and, you know the lockdowns and stuff of covid brought this game probably more into the spotlight oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, and I, I saw that because on, on top of the the, the mod the, the paid mod that we got for for tabletop sim you can also just buy it as a standalone because like there's like this new insert resurgence of like digital board games i mm-hmm. guess or like everybody's making a digital like a steam version of their board game and Wingspan has one as well, because I think we even got a coupon. Yeah, our, we got a discount box. code with it, yeah. It was like, hey, go buy Wingspan the video game for <laughs> 20% off on Steam. Go do it. And I was like, I nice. will. But first, I'm going to buy the Tabletop Sim DLC as well. <laughs> and I really hope that they get a cut of that money. Yeah. You know, because, like, this is a great game, and I, I want to support, you know, this sort of stuff. Give them mm-hmm. my money. Please make more games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely. No, yeah, it's... it was really pretty. The one thing... <laughs> that I didn't really like about this game <laughs> was the tutorial. So when we first played the game during the blackouts and stuff, we played with um what is it called? It says it on the website. It, it has like a like a like, t- like a tutorial scenario where it's like basically like like a, a mock a mock run. Yeah, the like Swift a walkthrough. start promo pack is what it's called. There you go. Um and so basically what this has is it has one giant like play card for each player in like a five player game. And it kind of walks you through, like, four actions. Yeah, like, four actions. And each player is different. It also comes with specific cards that each player is supposed to use. Um, And so when Nick and I played it, we played it with, you know, just player one and two, and we took the cards and everything. And we performed the actions... But what I noticed and what I didn't really care about care for was that the 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 quick start or swift start, it really forced you into one habitat. And so the habitats do different things. The forest does um food, the grasslands does laying eggs, and then the wetlands mm-hmm. is drawing cards. Um so mine was very heavy into the wetlands. So I guess my build was to draw cards. <laughs> And Nyx was all about the food, and so he he had tons of food all the time. Like, we, we ended up playing that, that game out all the way to the end, and I just struggled really, like, I struggled a lot with getting any food because the way the game started off, it just put, told me to put everything into my wetlands, which mm-hmm. got rid of all of my food tokens. And so then I was having to use the, the lowest level of the food you know, area, which was only one cube while Nick was getting three at a time. And it was just like, mm. I can't get enough food to put enough birds out there, but I have tons of cards that I can't do anything with until finally I got one of those <laughs> where you can tuck a card type of thing. But I felt like the the tutorial really forced you into one direction and didn't really help you understand the game. As far as like how to play it and what to do, I feel like it was a lot better to just play through a round, and that's when I really understood what was going on. Yeah. Um, as far as like the Swift Start, like I, I personally wouldn't play the Swift Start, and I wouldn't make anyone else play it either. Well, you know, like while while I do, I do understand your 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 your, your gripes with the with the Swift Start. Mm-hmm. What I feel like you almost need to do is like break out the Swift Start and play through the like. Because I think it goes through like four or five rounds, yeah. right? Or, well, or, or turns. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think maybe like you do those five to like, because those five it does do a good job of telling you what each section is about and how to get points. Somewhat. You know? Well, we also didn't look at players, you know, three, four, and five as far yeah, as but... it's assuming you're playing with a five player game. Yeah, I'm. I'm saying like. Even just like if I was only focusing on my player mat, it only told me what the wetlands do. It didn't really tell me what the the forest did or what the grasslands did. At the end of mine, it was like, okay, draw, you know, draw more cards. You're probably going to need food, though. And I was like, well, how am I supposed to get food? If Nick wasn't playing player one that says this is how you get food, I would have no idea how to get food. So, like I said, I, I, I could see your gripes. But like I said, my, my only thought would just be, Look at all five. Look at all five of the player mats for the Swift Start. That way, you kind of see because it seems like each of them was probably meant to talk about a different area of the game. Yeah, uh, you know, food, yeah. drawing cards, laying eggs, uh, probably victory points and stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. They play through the five actions on each card, and then start over because now you have an idea of how the game works, and do not carry out and play through a full game with it because every person will be pigeonholed into one type of thing. Yeah, but that like that would be my suggestion. But so. like even when Jacob played this for the first time, we just walked him through like here's what you do because I feel like with the Swift well, Start also like it was like okay place your cube on this square. Now do this. Now move your cube here. Like it didn't explain the flow very well. If you understand what I'm trying to say, where well, it's yeah. like you put it in the rightmost and then you you bring it down all the way to the end, doing anything along the way. It was just like put your cube here. Okay, move it to this card and take one whatever from the supply. Okay, move your cube to the end. Done. I don't know. I I think it did I think it did a good job of go if you're going in fresh and you don't know anything about this game or how it's played. Mm -hmm. I think it did a decent job of telling us how to play. I I think yeah. that yes, I mean it, it's always going to be better to have someone who actually knows how to play tell mm -hmm. you how to play. Well, I but I think yeah. that goes with any game. Well, I would have rather sat down and read through the instructions then do the swift start because we also didn't read well, through the instructions when we first played that's we true. did and the so swift start we, 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 we went left instead of right so <laughs> yeah we didn't read the instructions no I, surprise. I think we're, we're getting we're getting bogged down and oh i did not like this one tutorial thing when it's a fantastic game. No, no, no it is a great game i'm just saying you know this is my say. one issue with it is i didn't care for the tutorial at all i wouldn't recommend anyone to play the tutorial read the read the rule book read the you know the actions and what you're supposed to do and then play it and you'll have a lot of fun or even just go watch someone play it on youtube you know watch them play a round or two and what's our our, our kind of mock motto read read the rules read the rules read yeah the rules. read read the rules yeah i didn't i didn't care for the swift start very much i felt like it was just telling you what to do and what to take and not necessarily why um you were doing it or how the actions were working and that's just my opinion I know mm -hmm. you didn't necessarily feel that strongly, but I felt like it really pigeonholed you. Um, and yeah, you could just play through the first, you know, the five actions that it said and then restart, but that also takes like a lot of setup and then takedown and stuff like that. So yeah, that's my opinion. If I were to Maybe. suggest this to someone, I wouldn't have them go through the swift start. Just read the rules and play the game. I mean, I thought she was going to say she didn't like it because she lost. No, but... <laughs> no, I've lost every game we've played so far. Which I mean, we I'm finally we finally found a game that <laughs> I can consistently win. <laughs> so I didn't think, I didn't think it would happen. <laughs> it is a fun game. I love this game. It's so pretty. I love the the scoring, the different mechanics, the fact that each of the birds is different and mm -hmm. they have little facts. Like every each game you play is it it's never going to be the same. Yeah, because there's like right. like, like what, was it like a hundred and something birds cards? Yeah. There's like so many birds that if you actually well, shuffle the deck up like. The odds of you drawing like all the same ones again, it's very low. Yeah, this well, I, I love this game. This is going to be one of my new favorites. Definitely something that I would want to play, like you said, with with Phil. Um, I would want to play this with my family who don't really play board games at all. <laughs> I feel like it, it's easy enough that you can teach it to someone that doesn't really play board games, but also more complex than like Catan, mm -hmm. if you get what I mean. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that was our board game this week. I did really love it. Please don't <laughs> take my 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 tutorial criticism to heart. I, I loved this game, but that was Wingspan. Mm -hmm. um, definitely go and pick it up or try it on the tabletop sim. 
uh, by buying that mod, right? It's a mod? DLC. Oh, DLC. Um, it's really great. I totally recommend. We totally recommend. Oh, 10 yeah. out of 10. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a really good Absolutely, experience. we'll play again. All right. And so this is where we would usually close out the podcast and say goodbye and see you next week. But um, if you listen to our podcast last week, you know that we went into kind of a rant about Kickstarters at the beginning of the episode and ended up <laughs> taking about 20 minutes of time <laughs> just talking about different Kickstarters we looked at. Um, so we wanted to keep going with our Kickstarters because we, we really want to support everyone that's you know putting themselves out there and making these games. These creators are great. Um, mm -hmm. We wanted to continue to do that. So instead of putting it at the beginning, we're going to go ahead and put that here at the end. And if you listen to us or know our YouTube channel, we're going to have a separate little video that's just a breakout of our Kickstarter corner. Um, so you can go ahead and check that little section out too. Um, but we'll go ahead and start talking about some Kickstarters that we have backed and that may be ending soon. And maybe you guys want to go ahead and join us in backing these. Uh, so Nick, do you want to go ahead and kick off <laughs> kick off Kickstarter Corner with your <laughs> with your project that you backed? Absolutely. So the one that I backed this week is called Orconomics. The, uh, the headline is The Cutthroat Economic Board Game for Orc Entrepreneurs Only. Um, so this is the, the <laughs> second printing of this game. So um, I'm, I'm, I, I had no idea that this was a thing before seeing it here on Kickstarter. And I, I was just immediately enamored with this game because it has a funny, hilarious, yet entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> and I, I, you know me, I love like business management kind of games. And this is totally right up my alley. Yeah. So the whole premise is that, like, this is kind of like, imagine orc society has kind of advanced to, like, the modern day, you know, where we're no longer, like, medieval people fighting with swords and shields and all that. We're we're a modern society. We got cars and industry and stuff like that. But orcs still have that that bloodthirsty rage, you know, they got to they got to fight things, you know, and it's like, so how do, how do you how do you how do you make an outlet for that? Well, Join the world of business where cutthroat transactions and, you know, <laughs> you can topple people down the ladder of industry, you know, as ways of <laughs> defeating your opponents. And and it totally sells itself that way, which is mm -hmm. great. So I, I thought it was it was pretty flippin' awesome. I think this is actually based on a book, being that one of their like stretch goals that they unlocked is a reference to the J. Zachary Pike Orconomics book. So I, I have to go look up this book now. Because I I didn't even know it was it was a book, so I I'm really excited about it. It seems like it's um, it has the kind of thing where the board when you first set it up it changes every time, mm -hmm. because you draw it's a wheel that all kind of clicks together, and each pie on this wheel is a um, a different industry, and so you place them all you come draw them all out and place them in a circle to make your 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 pie chart here. And every pie is an industry, and everyone draws different industries when they start, as far as which ones they can they can play into. Mm -hmm. And when you lay them out, the industries that you are involved in starting out, you can only branch out into neighboring industries. And so that's how you like you know maybe you you drew tourism, but your neighbor got like I don't know manufacturing or something. I'm not sure what all the industries are, but if if the if the next player drew manufacturing and it's right next to tourism. You could like aggressively move into their industry to try to do like hostile takeover <laughs> and stuff like that. So, it it seemed really cool. I, I am super excited. I I backed it like, like I said, as soon as I heard about it, I backed it. And so this one still has it looks like a week to go. So by by the, when, the, when the time that this podcast drops, I think it'll still have like three or four days left. So we're gonna have links to the this Kickstarter in our uh, in the description in the field notes. So. Make sure I go and check it out. Orconomics. So super excited. Nice. <laughs> All right. Anything else? That, that's it. That's it for Orconomics. Say, uh, Jacob, which one did uh, what, what, what did you back? Oh, so I backed a. It's actually a software called Dungeon Alchemist, and it is a it is a map making software that deals in. Uh, 3D maps for like gate like tabletop games like D and D, and those kinds of things. Okay. But it and it's 
it, it uh, blew its goal out of the water. <laughs> they uh, wanted 54,000 and they're at 1.8 million at the million. recording of this podcast. It's still going up. And as it's we're still speaking. going up. And they have six <laughs> days to go as of right now. So. Yeah, when this episode drops, I think it'll still have two or three. Yeah, it'll, have a, it'll so still have a couple of days left uh, to go. March 11th. But it's, it is a really. I, I saw. I remember I saw an ad on YouTube. And I, like, I don't usually click ads on YouTube. But I saw <laughs> this one and I was like, wow. I could really use something like that because I love making maps. Maps is mm-hmm. they're they're so much they're so much fun to do, and they they seem like they're going to have a lot of stuff in Dungeon Alchemist, and it they just they look so pretty. Like they are they are really good looking maps. So yeah, like I'm I'm scrolling through the Kickstarter right now, and I, I gotta say this this if the maps come out like this, it looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, they also they do have a deal where you can export it to whatever virtual tabletop you're playing in, whether that be Roll20, uh, Foundry, Virtual Tabletop, or... Uh, maybe even Tabletop Sim? Maybe even Tabletop Sim. However, you can also print them. Like, as in paper oh. prints. Yeah, I see it down here, further down on the thing. It's got little flat flat mats that have the nice 3D... Yeah, they have like, the nice little, little buildings on them. So even, if, so even if you're playing like an in-person game... You could, you could still, you this still has utility. Yeah, you can still like before the game go and print out all of your little maps all your maps, and then and... bring them with you. Yeah, yeah. And look at that. It's like it's, it's it looks like it's it's perfectly optimized for those tabletop RPGs with like the nice grid system and everything built onto it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, like they they even show it in. They have a picture of it imported into Virtual Foundry Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Oh, yeah. On their on their um their Kickstarter page, and it it just it looks so it looks so pretty. I saw it and I was like, you know, usually I get I get YouTube ads for like crappy mobile games <laughs> and stuff like that. So even when I saw this, I was like, hmm. I'll 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 let y'all know how it is when it comes out. But so, yeah, I, I have definitely... I have high hopes. Say so if I have if high hopes even, for this. If it even partially delivers on what they're promising. It's going to be amazing. I think you're going to be real happy, and I think Philip is probably going to buy this as soon as it's available on Steam. Oh yeah, so. I don't know how much it's going to be on Steam, but I mean, honestly, I mean, because it because it you, is going to come If you have like down. really positive hands-on experience, he'll, he'll Philip, who is yeah. like an avid DM who like spent hundreds of hours prepping the, yeah. the last session, last campaign we played, last with game him, we did. He well, would jump on thing. this. Oh, and that's the thing because it looks really simple right now from what i'm seeing it doesn't look optimized for like really big things Mm -hmm. like you're probably going to map out a room of a dungeon in this and then you like do it do it modularly yeah which i mean which i think most D &D stuff probably should be modularly because you don't want to like lay out the whole epic dungeon in front of your players and they'll be like huh well i really see how deep this is gonna go no you wanted them to see like one room yeah that way it's like okay well i'm gonna open that door it's like okay well that door leads to this This room (laughs) right well so but like looking at it it's 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 meant for kind of like small scale encounter maps which i guess was really all you need y'all y'all are right yeah when like when you're when you actually need a map all you really need are these smaller scale ones Mm -hmm. i i would think i've never dm'd before i'm not gonna pretend like i know what kind of maps you need but it seems like the bigger, grander scale ones. When you're talking about like the city of whatever, you well, don't need you don't need a nitty gritty map like this. This is just like, oh, here's a map of the city. Right. You're gonna go to the docks district and do something. I don't know. Well, cool. based on this too, on the how does it work? It says select a size for your map, and you can pick like based on sheets of paper. And then there's also one that says infinite. So I'm assuming oh, that's for so like for computer tabletops. based. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you're not gonna. Yeah, you're not, you're gonna, not gonna print gonna an infinite a... map. No. <laughs> Watch me, Erica. The ink but... that you would waste. <laughs> but you could drop that bad boy into a into like roll twenty and yeah, shabam. Well, see, and it, if you look at their their prints, it looks like you can print like you don't have to do the uh, the the flat orthographic projection for mm-hmm. a map. You could have like a bit of perspective with like shadows and yeah, it looks like it, you know what are for walls. For the printable, printables, it seems like. 
<laughs> like that stereotypical like when you're looking for new apartments and they've got like the top down view it's but got it's got still like a yeah. view. Ish, you know what i'm talking about yeah it's exactly <laughs> what we, it looks we need like, to, like, but like no. send this to like apartment complexes so they can make better maps of their apartments hey. <laughs> that's, that's exactly <laughs> that what we need great. to do <laughs> but that is uh dungeon alchemists they currently have a crap ton of uh options for you to to pledge mm-hmm. the obviously the cheapest is the basic which is 30 with 30 bucks you can go all the way up to a thousand <laughs> if you would de- <laughs> uh, uh the thousand one gets you two lifetime licenses for dungeon alchemist a uh, unique painting for a unique painting of your likeness in, in dungeon alchemist oh my God. Your you own can add your, design. a Kickstarter exclusive object set, your name in the credits, access to the beta program, which I'm guessing is going to come out yeah, beta sometime. Yeah. Sometime, what did we say, Q3 this year? Yeah, so you'll probably yeah. get they'll probably get access to the beta probably shortly after this campaign stops. Yeah, and then you well, and, the real, then, and then the real program drops in later in the year. So. Yeah, and then all the stretch goals that that they've mm-hmm. blown out of the water. I, I guarantee they probably hit all the stretch goals. Oh, yeah, so yeah, no, they so, definitely have. The last one was a million, and yeah. they've done that. And it's wonderful because that's <laughs> that means that I've hit all the stretch goals because the even the thirty dollar guy gets the stretch goals. Well, yeah, because all the stretch goals are just mm-hmm. like, hey, we're gonna add bonus content into it. You know? Yeah, the the water one looks really cool. You can add mm-hmm. little like rivers and beaches and stuff. I think that's awesome. It's gonna be great. But this yeah, so awesome. that's that's Dungeon Alchemist. Yeah, awesome. So we will definitely have the link for that bad boy in the in the field notes. Definitely. And so Erica, what uh, which one did you support this week? So this week I supported Chamber of Wonders, um, and this one says. Send your agents in London's various areas, collect unique objects, and try to set up the best Chamber of Wonders. And so what really drew me into this one was the art style. It looks very um, Darkest Dungeon. I saw that. Yeah, it looks really... (laughs) It it does. It definitely looks like Darkest Dungeon. It's very, like, grim sort of, uh, like, hand-drawn aesthetic. Yeah. That was the the vibes I was getting. This game is that you guys... That you... You you guys. You are playing as... Aristocat, Aristocats? Aristocats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everybody wants to be a cat. In, um, in London. Um, no, you're aristocrats in London. And what you're trying to do is build. So when you're that rich and you have that much money, you get bored. And so you're trying to build the collection of the best weird thing, basically. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so you're sending your little people on missions to go to various places in London, like the bank, and it has like different places. What were they? It was like the bank. It's got Baker Street. It's got uh, Big Ben. Um, different places around London to go and find these different wonders and artifacts and stuff to build up your collection. And so you're playing against you know everyone else to see who can get the best collection. And mm-hmm. at each of the locations, there's like little mini games that you have to play in order to to win the wonder from that area. Um, okay. it, it seems really interesting. I love the art style. I love that right now they have unlocked an expansion for that involves Sherlock Holmes. Oh, nice! Like Sherlock, so. well, you mentioned you mentioned Baker Street, so it's gotta. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, so they're working on that stretch goal right now. This one is also ending on March 11th, uh, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Since we're in Texas, that's what it's showing. So you guys have a few days to go and back this if you want to. I think it looks great. It's already surpassed its goal, so it's going to be successful. And I'm just really excited for this. It looks great. So, yeah, and this one, it looks like they're they're estimating that you're going to get it in October of this year. So you don't even have to wait that long to get your game. Yeah, I, I'm so excited. I, I'm so mm-hmm. excited. <laughs> no, like this this one looks really great. Like, if if for nothing else, the beautiful art style, mm-hmm. like that sells me alone. But then you talk about the like the goofy, like aristocracy being like, oh, 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 well, I have the <laughs> mummified hand of whatever, whatever. Yeah. You know, and you don't have that <laughs> right. in your collection, Jeeves. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. looks, it looks plebeian. <laughs> plebeian. <laughs> 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 Perhaps 
absolutely barbaric. Yeah, and it says that there's 92 different wonder cards. So that's oh. that's how many different things there are in this game that you can collect for your little display. Hey. I, I'm very excited. It looks so great. And then it's also got um, a little like cardboard cutout standing buildings for the different locations you go to so the map will be like tall also like you'll be able to see these little you know structures like the, out there they're like landmarks yeah yeah i see it where it's got like buckingham palace and stuff like that mm -hmm. on there that's really cool ah such such a fantastic visual aesthetic i know i i can't wait for for us to get a copy of this and then pop that bad boy open yeah 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 so all right, so that's that was our three main Kickstarters for yeah. So this week, what for we this did, week. Um, Orconomics, we did uh, Dungeon Alchemist and mm -hmm. Chamber of Wonders, yes. and they are all oh, still yeah. open Kickstarters. You got till a little bit later this week to back them. Yeah, as right. of the the release of this episode. <laughs> as of this yeah. as of this episode, you still have a couple yeah. of days yeah. on each if of them. If you're listening to this on start on launch date, <laughs> then you still got you still have time. Yeah, go go support them. All right. Well, all right. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for coming to another episode. Everyone wants to close it. Thanks again for listening to another episode of the Unearthing Games podcast, and we'll see you later. Bye. 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 Bye.